You're not gonna go there, are you? Oh, yes I am. It is Conversations with Corel. I am Corel. So very glad you are joining me. You know, I was about to start the show and I was in a rather bad mood. I was. Uh, and then I sang. I did. I sang Great Day by Barbara Streisand. And I was going to let you hear the whole thing. But you see, Ember always sings along with me. Always. At some point in a song. You may call it howling. Ember calls it singing along. I know that it's something in the tonality of a song. Because she does it to the radio for Adele, someone like you. Uh, Madonna, material girl. But we know that there's a bark in that song. Uh, and other, other such things. So uh, we know that Ember likes to, uh, to bark, uh, when, not bark, but to sing. She, it, she really is singing, actually, uh, when she does it. Uh, and it's, it's quite fun. So uh, she does in the song that I just did. Uh, and um, so I won't let you hear the whole thing. But at the end of the show today, I'll let you hear the beginning. Because it picked me right up. Uh, that and the bonk hit. Uh, you see... The world is more insane by the moment. Um, it's, you know, let's have a conversation today. Oh, that scared me. Whatever that was scared me. I don't know what that was, but it scared me. It was a loud, oh, it was this. I hit this. I hit the Sonos. Did that scare you guys too? It scared me. Uh, anyway, um, let's have a conversation whether or not the Sonos wants us to. By the way, uh, Apple stopped selling Sonos because they're going to start releasing their own product. Um, so we are all, you know, I've been seeing post after post. Uh, I have been seeing a lot of things on social media that we're all kind of at wit's end. We all kind of are. We are even the sane, rational, calm people. Mandy Patinkin and his wife put out a really great commercial that he basically starts in this panicked mode, you know, in a world gone mad. And she's all, honey, calm down. You know, that's what's wrong. Everybody is just too upset, too angry. People need to calm down, step back, stand by. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and she then starts talking about reasons why we should stay sane. Reasons that we should, in fact, stand down and stand by. Uh, and... In doing so, she gets very upset. And of course, she starts yelling and screaming. And, you know, then Mandy has to, Mandy Patinkin has to say, well, honey, <laughs> you're doing the same thing. Uh, and I know with many of you, when you uh, try to do things like do dishes, which I'm doing as you hear in the background, uh, when you try to do things like life and you want to go about them without stress, you think, if I could just avoid the news, or if I could just do this, or I, if I could just do that. And then, for whatever reason, you find yourself breaking down crying over something stupid. Uh, or you find yourself, you know, just not having the best mental health. Um, it's because every day, the, the, the bar for absurd. You know, my parents... Would have been in their 90s now, my dad. They were born in the 30s. So they'd be Oscar's age. Maybe that's why I like Oscar so much. He'd be my mom and dad's age. Um, and they had a completely different life, you know? And things that you and I, because I'm in my 50s. Uh, I'll be 58 November 7th. I'm accepting gifts. Should I start a gift registry <laughs> for the 12 people out there that care? Uh, and that's enough, honey. I ain't downgrading that. Uh, speaking of which, my best to uh, Mike Singleton. He's a former NBC executive. Uh, he listens when he can. He is currently trapped uh, in a hotel in, I believe, Cancun, where Category 4 Delta is about to slam uh, tonight and tomorrow. They evacuated the, uh, the, the, the four-star, five-star resort where he's staying, uh, and now they're sleeping on pool lounges in the, um, I think he said, the recreation center uh, of this resort because a Category 4 hurricane is about to slam them. So my thoughts go out to him and everybody in its path, including those that will be in Louisiana when it slams into the coast of the Category 1 or 2 later in the week. Um, we never had to face 
truly unprecedented times. We never really did, you and I, in our 50s or 60s. You know, we didn't. We thought we did, but we didn't. We had Vietnam. That wasn't really an unprecedented time. And we had, you know, uh, the Gulf Wars, all of them. Again, it wasn't World War II. It wasn't World War I. It wasn't the Great Depression. You know, there are people in this country that starve to death, that go to bed hungry every night. There are. But there are some places that they could still find food, maybe. 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 Some don't. They starve. But there are, there are some places that you could beg for something. In the Great Depression, they literally boiled shoes. And I'm not making that up. For the leather, it was cow. They made stock. You know, they, they ate trash. They turned trash into food. And we, never, we haven't had to face that kind of thing. During the war, you know, there were no men. Women had to, to go into the workplace and do jobs they had never. I mean, we just haven't experienced a huge shift like that until now. Until now. Until COVID. I'm not talking about Trump. I don't want, I, he takes the oxygen out of everything. He takes the air out of every conversation, out of the media won't stop talking about him. And I'm done with it. I can't. So today, let's talk about you. Let's talk about me. Let's talk about the fact that there's no air. You know, outside it's unhealthful hair in Vegas again. And let me tell you why that's important and how you think that's just a number. I keep very close track of my health on this Apple Watch. And one of the things I keep track of is called my VO2 level, okay? That's the amount of air that I can take in when I'm exercising. And I, I pride myself on the fact that my VO2 level is 40.02 every day when I exercise. That puts me in the top 3% of men my age. And I like that because I work hard for that. Well, the last three weeks, it's been 37 or 36 or 38. And I was concerned that it was me. I thought, oh my God, it's me. I'm having problems. Uh, I'm not taking in as much air. Do I have COVID? You know, as today, three workmen had to come from my floor. And yes, they're in masks, but there was a point where they had to take one off. Uh, and I'm terrified. I was in a mask. I stayed six feet apart. When I was in, out of the mask, I was in a separate room. I had all the fans on. I had the doors open. I had the air conditioner fan on. Truly, I had both doors open. I had a no, one fan here. I had the air conditioner fans on coming out of the vents in every room. I had windows open that are still open. Uh, I was in a mask, all because people were coming into my house. And the president's telling us to not worry about COVID, to relax about COVID. I'm not relaxed about COVID. Are you relaxed about COVID? I'm not. You know, I'm terrified. I, I am sitting here with COVID-anxiety. COVID anxiety. COVID, COVID, I, COVID, I, let's figure out a, how to combine anxiety and COVID, you know, really. Ang, anxiety, no, COVID-y, COVID-y. I have, I'm, I've got covid which is anxiety and COVID. It's COVID anxiety because a man, oh, I didn't clean the bar. See, someone stood here at the bar and I didn't clean it. And now I just realized I have been leaning all over it. Oh no, where is my alcohol spray? Spray the arm. Spray. Spray the bar. Spray it, Chucky. Spray. Oh, 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 is it too late? Did he already infect me? Am, am I going down in flames and get the disinfectant bleach things? And these are not for props. I have these right here by the bar. I ain't fooling around. You ain't going to come in my house and give me the, the Rona. Uh-uh. No. Oh. I forgot to do this, and here I am all leaning up again. See, this is how free... I'm not doing this for the camera. This is how freaked out I am. He might have touched this, and I've already touched it. Oh, sweet Jesus, I could have the Rona. Oh, see? Ain't no one doing this around Donald Trump. Ain't no one saying, Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, you could get the Rona. Ah, uh -uh. he doesn't have the Rona. If he does, then he's in a delusional phase, and he's... Well, the good news is if he has the Rona... He's got it badly because he'd be in a delusional phase from the drugs. <gasps> Did I just say the good news is if he has the Rona, he's got it badly? <gasps> oh, who have I become? God damn it. I don't want see. No, no. He just won't 
stop using Marine One and photo ops and it, and they are covering it like it's just news and it's just propaganda. <sighs> so I have the anxiety, the cov- the coviety. I've got the coviety because of the covid And every day, the bar for absurd. You know, I bet during the war it was the exact same way. I do. I bet. I really do. I bet during the war, every day they thought it couldn't get any stranger. And then they would hear about whatever, you know, the weirdness was, Normandy or whatever. You know, they can't use tin anymore. Or all of their men are vanishing. You know, whatever. They, They had their weirdness. And the depression which we're in or about to be if this keeps the stock market plunged. The the, the notion that he wants them to the, the, see, I can't do it. I go right back to him because today he said, I'm instructing my representatives. He said that today. I'm extra, I'm instructing my representatives to drop it and concentrate only on the Supreme Court nomination. My power in language, people, I am instructing my representatives. Whose representatives, you orange Cheeto frack? There are representatives. They've forgotten it, and he's forgotten it. And they see themselves. Matt gets that alleged child-molesting individual said today that I'll never love another president. He said that. It's creepy. It's cult-like. It's fanatical. And it's affecting your psyche and mine. Oh, I've never felt more pent up or locked up in my life. I haven't been to a play in a year. I haven't been to a concert in a year. I haven't been to anything that I do in my life. And this mother mofo, okay, this guy is going to just tell people don't fear it. Tell people to... Oh, that maybe he's immune. He I, all this stuff. You know, we have got to move beyond him. We've got to. We do. He he's he's sucking the our life out of us. And what lives do we have left in this country? What exactly are we fighting for? What American way of life are we fighting for? They just announced to a judges that they don't even want me to be able to be married anymore. Not that anybody's asking, but if anybody was asking, I'm, you know, we're going to go back to that again. Fighting over same-sex marriage again. Fighting over abortion still. No wonder we're the most tarred country in the world. And we are. I read, now I read France 24, Irish Times, London Times, New Delhi. I read all kinds of papers every morning. Oh my God, it ain't kind. It ain't kind. Y'all need to, if y'all aren't reading those, ooh, child. They talking about us like, oh, Lord, they're calling us everything but a white country. No, they called us that. A country of white supremacists. They called us that. A cult-like following. Oh, France 24 is mocking Trump and his COVID. The world is questioning whether or not he had it. Not us. They're actually saying the words, did he even have COVID? You know? Meanwhile, we're over here where I'm freaked out. I'm telling you, this is all right here by me every day. Disinfectant wipes, isopropyl alcohol spray. Oh, I spray it on everything. You know, the microphone everywhere. I just spray it. You know, it smells of alcohol. I disinfect wipe. I wash my hands. I wear a mask. Here's my mask right here. I've been wearing my mask in my house, okay? You know, I wash the insert in my mask. There's a removable insert, and then there's a washable insert. There are two micro inserts inside my mask. Oh, yeah. That's where I'm at. I've got gloves. I got the rub vinyl gloves. I got the food service gloves. I've got black gloves. Oh, look over here. Look, right here. Right here. Look what I just bought. Look, right here, y'all. I just bought these black gloves at Kohl's. Uh, so they're, you know, like black everyday utility kind of gloves and I'm wearing them everywhere again. It's fall. COVID's going up. The president's acting like people are now going to be out there. Oh, so yeah, I got the coviety. I do. <sighs> That's why I made a pan of brownies. Oh, forgive me, sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. I needed to make the brownies. I did. I don't know why. Oh Lord, you possessed me and made me make the brownies. Suddenly, I found myself throwing sugar and flour and baking soda and 
butter and coconut oil and egg replacer and oh other things chunks of chocolate chunks of walnut some beets and some dates all up in there mm-hmm and as the little handsome person from the floor place who I served tea and told him about Anna Russell, he said it was the best brownies and tea he had ever had. Yes, I served him tea. He was here at tea time. I asked him if he wanted tea. He said yes. Gave him a little history in it. Um, so there we have the world. I'm having tea with workmen. And then when they leave, I am freaking out that they left a virus behind. Uh, oh, yes, I took his temperature. Oh, yes, I have one of those. Want me to go get that and show you? Oh, yes, I do. I have a forehead thermometer. You enter my house, your temperature is getting taken. You step over the threshold, your temperature is getting taken, you're wearing a mask, and I prefer you have gloves on. So, but he had to take his mask off to talk on the phone. Oh, oh. And before I could say, could you take that outside? He had already breathed out and breathed in and breathed out and breathed in. Oh, God, it's like Kellyanne Conway at a party. Oh, did you see her and her daughter up on a... Oh, she was swearing and cursing at her daughter. Because her daughter said, they're lying to you. Trump ain't doing well, honey. Molly, mm -mm, he in danger, girl. Uh, and she's all, you're, you're disrupting. You're causing disruption. <laughs> she, sp she spoke to her daughter that way. I cannot believe the disruption you are. The disruption. My mama would have walked in and said, what the hell's wrong with you causing all that ruckus? <laughs> and no, my mama was a four foot nine French woman. She was not large or black, but she would still would have walked in. Chucky, <laughs> put down that phone and stop causing all that problem. She wouldn't have said, you're being disruptive. Jesus, God. Oh, being birthed by Kellyanne Conway. See, there are worse fates than being poor. <laughs> Oh, raised by wolves. Um, where were we? I don't even freaking know. I don't know anymore. Where are we? Where are we going? We're going straight to hell. We have 27 days of hell. That's what we have. And then who knows after that? Unless he wins. But boy, they're old. Oh, early voters opening. Child, people are lining up. They are lining up as if there's a Coke dealer in the men's room, honey. I'm telling you right now. Oh, that line used to get long. Because some were there to pee and some were there to buy Coke. And you never know who was who until you had to go through and ask, are you buying or peeing? Buying or peeing? Buying? And if they said both, what you're going to do is say split yourself in half and wait in two lines. Oh, you, I know you women can relate about waiting for pee. Men don't often wait for pee, but at gay bars, okay? See, women, here's America. This, this explains America. At gay bars on men's night, when there ain't a woman in the freaking place, and there's a men's and a woman's room, the men will only use the men's room and let the woman's room be empty. Not me. I cannot tell you how many times at a gay bar where there's nothing but men and there's a men's and a woman's room and the woman's empty, I go use it. And, oh, you can't do that. I'm a watch me, baby. And then I go in. I sit to pee, though. I don't stand. I, don't, I wouldn't do that to you all. Uh, but no, I do. I go in. Oh, yes, I do. If there's no one in there. And I always ask, anybody in here? And if there's no one, you know, no one says, no, I mean, uh, and if they say, what are you doing in there? And I can always say, now I identify. It's how I identify. Okay. See, now, women, you should go in men's rooms. When you have to pee, if there's ever an event again where you have to go, at, so what am I talking about? You know, I had this conversation today with John Griffiths from Gallica, the LGBTQ entertainment critic, because we're now planning the next award show. You can see the current one. I haven't been promoting that enough. It's for free at reverie.tv. You just go to reverie.tv and type in Dorian Awards. Uh, and there they are, the 2020 Dorians, and I'm the host, and there's lots of celebrities, and you'll love it, and a lot of you haven't seen it yet. Go to DoriansToast.com, and you can just click the link there, but yeah. Uh, anyway, so we're already producing the next one. Uh, and I said, we've got to talk about Hollywood and the screens, that I want the theme to be the screen, not the silver screen, but the screens of 2020. How did you watch movies? And I'd love to start hearing from you. And I'll put you in the show. If you record a video, and I'll keep promoting this, if you record a video about how you watched movies in 2020, did you watch them on the computer? Did you watch them on Apple TV, Roku? And if you did, did you watch them on Amazon, Hulu, Netflix? How did you watch movies? Did you rent them? Did you have DVDs? 
how did you see the films of 2020? We're going to be nominating movies uh, that are out or have or have come out. You haven't seen them at the theater. How have you been seeing? Have you been paying the twenty dollars to rent the first rate, like Bill and Ted's new one and Mulan and all of that? Or have you just been watching movies that have been available for you on Netflix and Amazon, those kind of premiere movies, HBO Max? And what have you been actually watching them on? A large monitor, a small computer, a smaller iPhone or iPad? How do you watch what Hollywood is giving you? I'd love to know. And if you send a video, horizontal, not vertical, a horizontal video to feedback at reallycorel.com or upload it to YouTube or Dropbox and send me the link, feedback at reallycorel.com, I'll consider putting it in my new show. Because how are you watching movies in 2020? What have you done? How have you watched them? You know, has it been on your big monitor? Has it been on? Most of mine, I have to say for real, has been out here on the, on the iMac or this 27 inch monitor over here. I have barely watched the 70 inch in the TV room because the TV room has been the production room and it's been a mess and so I just haven't watched it. And my iPad, my iPad Pro with the with the ear, with the earbuds which I've lost. Uh, by the way, I would told you I would lose them and I have lost them. They're around the house somewhere, but they're lost. Um $250 and they're lost. So, I forgot what we got on all of that information. Oh, because we were talking about the future and movies. Uh, and screens because Hollywood keeps putting off movies and so movie theaters going business Regal is closing 13 theaters tomorrow uh, here in Las Vegas they're closing hundreds across the country and the world they're out they're done Audi bye um, and I said theaters are never coming back and John said don't say that I said theaters are never coming back in their current incarnation they will not come back because after this pandemic there's going to be another and another we are going to have to change the way we consume movies. And it is so unfair that Hollywood, for decades, has sent the rich and famous and the media movies that they want us to pay attention to as a screener. So we don't have to go see it at the theater. Or they do set up in L.A., New York, San Francisco, they set up uh, you know screenings to go to. This year, there won't be. They're going to send everything on DVD, or now they even send just links and so it's okay for them. They, a major motion picture company, they have screening apps now. You, I've, I've got five of them. 20th Century Fox has one, Universal. They all have screening apps. And you get a login from the publicity place and you go and you watch the movie. So I've been watching first run movies for decades as, stream, as screeners. So how come I get the privilege of watching it at home when I want to? How come Oprah has a screening room. or But if you have a screening room at your house that you're happy with, your TV, your sound system, you can't access those movies. You have to go to a theater. Why? Because they want to control the experience? Well, I believe that what we've seen now is that we don't want that anymore. We want to control the experience. We want to control what we watch it on, when we watch it, how we watch it, if we stop it, if we don't. They're making theaters like living rooms. They're putting Barca loungers. They're having drink service. They're doing all of this. Well, then just stay the fuck home. If you got to go to the movie theater and order beverages and order food and have table service and everything else, just sit your ass at home and watch the movie then. You want to be that comfortable. Seriously. They were open. Before the pandemic, these theaters like Alamo were putting living rooms in front of big screens. Okay, well then why not just stay in the living room if there's a pandemic? And that's what we've been doing. And Hollywood refuses to let us have their big pictures thinking next year that we're suddenly, coronavirus ain't gonna be gone next year. Even if there's a vaccine, everybody ain't gonna take it. So if you got a fatal illness, it ain't the flu. I know they say, oh, it's the same as, it ain't the flu. People are dying left and right. How, tr Donald Trump has infected more people in three days than the entire countries of New Zealand, Vietnam, uh, and I believe there, what was the other one? Something, 14, uh, countries that total 14 million people have less infections than the White House. Coronavirus ain't going nowhere. Movie theaters as they existed are done because there's no going back. We keep acting like society and Donald Trump is pushing this agenda right now. Go back to what you were doing. There's no back. Okay? Backwards motion is bad, first of all, so unless you're heading for something really bad. Uh, and, and second of all, it's all about forward motion. 
We aren't going back to our old society. Our old society sucked prior to COVID. A lot of people were not essential workers. And the people that we deemed non-essential workers were actually the most essential workers. So COVID taught us that the people we thought were like not essential, the people that gather your carts up and then sterilize them now, the people that check you out at the grocery store, that are sitting there at the convenience store behind the glass, those people that actually keep you going, suddenly they essential workers. But the paper pushers and everybody that calls you to collect bills and everybody like that, honey, they can just sit their ass home and do their job because it ain't that useful to society. Think about that. We ain't going back to that. No, the, no. And so movie theaters aren't going back to business the way they used to do them. We can't. The genie's out of the bottle. Adapt or die. And they're dying. Because if they gave us a subscription service to each company, movie company, or they all got together on some kind of app where it was a subscription service and you got X amount of Hollywood movies per month for X amount of dollars, and it could be a decent amount. It could be like four movies for, you know, $75 a month. If you have a big family, that would totally be worth it. But they haven't tried to price anything out. They haven't tried to really say, okay, look, at-home viewing is now going to be a big chunk of our money. They're acting like television stations acted, terrestrials, when apps came along. And now everybody watches on an app and no one gives a rat to us about terrestrials. All right, I think I've gone way over time just chatting here, carrying on. No, I'm right at time. God, I'm good. Um, Okay, great. Because I have been just ratting and carrying on, but why not? I'm going to leave you with the opening. of The the, the tape was rolling. uh, And I was sitting here, you know, thinking what I was about to say to you. Because I want to be uplifting these days. I don't, you know, there's so much. And I'm so, I'm fraught. I know you're fraught. I'm fraught. It's, we're just a mess. We're frazzled. We are just little, (laughs) I'm afraid not. (laughs) <laughs> that's a really bad joke about a piece of twine <laughs> uh, walks into a bar and uh, the twine uh, <laughs> uh, the twine has uh, not been had a good lot in life so the twine yes I'm saying twine this twine walks into a bar uh, and the twine is disheveled uh, and he goes up to the bartender and says can I have a drink and he looks down and he goes I'm afraid not <laughs> Get it? I am a frit. Anyway. Uh, it's a, I didn't say it was a good joke. I just said it was a joke. Uh, nowadays, who needs humor? Just watch the news for... No, don't. You'll hurl yourself and bail yourself. Uh, so anyway, I was just sitting here trying to wonder what I could give you so we don't impale ourselves today, so we get through yet another absurd day in this bizarre political theater and sociopathic theater where we've got actual humans supporting Donald Trump, actual humans pre-ordering the coin, actual humans defending his actions. I, the, the, it's, it really, I used to watch The Twilight Zone. This is just like a you know bad episode. Uh, so I was like, what am I going to do? And I hadn't paused, uh, the music yet. Uh, and I was listening to the funny lady soundtrack for some reason, cause I don't often listen to that one. It's one of her forgotten movies. Uh, and great day came on and I started singing it and the tape started rolling. Cause I thought, oh, well, let me get to the show. It's four 30 or whatever. Um, and, uh, great. Uh, so I started singing it. So I'll just give you a verse here at the end of the show and you can see what was going on here. Uh, but other than that, um, I am Corell and you be who you want to be. So I don't hurt anybody. I love you bunches. And I'm so sorry that we have to endure this. I really am. You know, we, I don't know about you, but I find myself getting so much angrier at things like little things that shouldn't make me so furious, but yet I'm just furious. You know, even today I got quotes for the floor and they're, they both exceed the check that the HOA gave me. So now I'm furious again, but I'm not going to do anything until I get another quote. Uh, and they're, they are saying that my stuff should move out of here. So, <sighs> God, just get it done. Just get it over. Anyway, not your problem. Sorry. See, but that's life's problems. Life is going on. And how, you know, we can't go back to life the way it was, but we got to move forward. I've got to have workmen come in. I've got to have work done. If you own a home, it has to be done. 
You know, so how do you do it in Covidia? Do you just really wait for a year and let your house just fall apart? I've got water damage. They tore up part of the floor. I've been living with it since February because of COVID. I mean, I just finally have cried uncle and said, no, I'm going to have to let workmen in here and we're going to have to have strangers in the house. I'm terrified about that. That's why I'm in the mess I'm in because I wouldn't let them in here because of COVID. And they got tired of waiting for me. But the notion of four workmen here, you know, I mean, even if I have it cleaned afterwards, it's like, oh God, there were four people in here for like a week breathing all over my stuff. That's how freaked I am about this. It's killing people. They said we could have another couple hundred thousand dead by January. That's, oh, Lord. Yeah, okay, now's a good time for great day. So here, I'll leave you with that and we'll see you tomorrow. When your town and out, lift up your head and shout. There's gonna be a great day. Angels in the sky promise that by and by there's gonna be a great day. Gabriel will warn you some early morn. You will hear his horn. It's not far away. Lift up your head. There's gonna be a grave